What is going on, you knife nerds and EDC junkies, you gear guys and or gals out there? Uh, there are only two genders, so that's the only two things there could be out there. Unless you're a Windingo, which uh, hopefully those are not actually out there. Either way, long time coming. Update, final review, whatever it may be of the Cold Steel Airlight. It's pretty alright. So let's take a look at the old girl and see how she's holding up. Uh, I've carried this thing for months and months and months on end, and it's been there with me through it all, thick and thin, and has gotten every task I've ever asked of it accomplished, and for the most part, with ease. Uh, very, very, very impressed with this knife for the money, and for the weight, and the size, and the carryability of it all. Uh, it's right there in the name, Air Light. It's an extremely lightweight knife, Although, because of the triad lock that Cold Steel is known for, it's kind of, sort of, somewhat heavy duty. Between the lightweight G10 frames, the scales I should say, um, <clears throat> and the thin profile, the overall thin profile of the blade itself, nice simple pocket clip. Truth be told, it looks like they stole the design from the Kershaw leak or whatever it may be, but uh, sits very flush to the frame of the knife, the scale of the knife, and uh, it's easy in and out, strong, secure, haven't had it snag on anything, and uh, it carries relatively deep in the pocket. You do still have a little bit sticking out, of course, but I kind of like that because that does help extract the knife from your pocket when you need it. Um, simple deployment, simple deployment, thumb studs on the knife, okay, it's a manual folding knife, no big deal, they're ambidextrous, gets the job done. They come out of there pretty quick, if you want them to, nope, if you don't miss, you can get the knife out and into action if you do have to cut a bad guy or whatever it may be, um, or you're dangling from a tree stand or, or whatever it is, but a nice controlled slow opening of the blade, um, gets it done every single time. When the blade is open, again, due to the triad lock, which Cold Steel is very much known for, uh, and all their, you know, their cheesy videos on YouTube testing, torture testing their knives, uh, you should pay attention to that because this is like a $30 to $50 knife, maybe. I forget what I paid for it, but it's not that much money. And it's plain and, you know, nothing spectacular, standard, you know, materials. It's Aus 10A as far as uh, the blade steel is concerned. And it is, of course, made overseas in Taiwan, but it holds up. It's a relatively softer steel, which is why uh, when uh, we were having knife throwing competitions, uh, I bent my tip. But you know what? It didn't crack. It's still on there. I just got to reprofile everything. Um, so a softer steel will roll or, you know, bend over an edge uh, instead of chipping or cracking like a harder steel. But, of course, softer steel goes duller, quicker. Um, so, yeah, it doesn't have the best edge on it. And I'm sure it does have some chips or, or whatever in it. I haven't really maintained it because it's more of a beater knife. It's more of a work knife. It's not something nearly as elegant as, per se, a 25th year anniversary Microtech with matching all silver challenge coin. Um, but it is very nice and thin in profile, even thinner than the Microtech. And uh, they're both extremely light, which I like a lot. And then you do kind of have that plain thing going on. Strong lockup, G10, nothing special. Um, basically... A larger version here with the Cold Steel Voyager XL, basically a pocket sword. And uh, what the Cold Steels, you know, have always allured me with is that they're kind of like a, a poor man's Emerson, uh, which we have here with the Sheepdog. Simple, plain construction, nothing fancy G10 scales. Uh, these have a titanium liner in them. And uh, perhaps better steel, obviously, made in America. And huge shout out to Emerson for sending this out. Uh, I love this thing. I carry it from time to time. I am carrying a bunch of stuff right now. It's a Microtech LUDT because it just won't get dull on me. Uh, I use that thing pretty much every day. Um, but I, it switches it up. I change it up, you know, from time to time. And uh, this thing is always in rotation to some extent or another. And I love it. It's a it's a quality tool it's a quality weapon um i guess either way it's the tool and you're the weapon or maybe it's the weapon and 
I'm the tool. I don't know. Either way, uh, this is an awesome knife as well. And you kind of get, you know, the standard blade, standard, you know, just rough, aggressive, you know, grip texture in the, in the handle and the scales. Um, that's what you need for a working tool, for a defensive weapon or offensive weapon, depending on your context. And this, the Cold Steel Air Light, for me, for my money, and I like more expensive knives, I'm willing to pay for more expensive knives, um, and I carry them, I don't have any issues with it, you know, it's not, they're not all safe queens or whatever, but this honestly is an excellent value, I've been thoroughly impressed with it, uh, for the feature set, for how lightweight it is, how sturdy it is, there's maybe a little side to side, there's no lock rock though, and uh, if I had to fight with this, I would not feel under knifed i suppose um and for everyday tasks cutting the string off the shirt opening the mail cutting an apple uh prying stuff whatever uh a knife knife is one of the oldest tools if not the oldest tool other than perhaps a hammer and when that rock broke uh, a sharp shard off of it there you get the knife and people have been using them ever since they're one of the most useful tools every man and even woman should have one in their pocket and or purse and uh can never have too many, I suppose, but for the money, for the durability, for the reliability, the simplicity, um, the availability, you can order one online right now for, again, probably less than 50 bucks, and this thing has been carried and used and abused. It's got some little surface rust and stuff on it. I tried cleaning it up, but, you know, it's not the highest chromium content in Aus 10A, so you will get that sweating on the knife all day, whatever. This thing rocks. I'm, I'm really solid, or I'm really, it's really solid. I'm, I'm really impressed with how solid it is for how light of a knife that this is. It makes it easy to carry, easy to conceal, whatever it needs to be in your situation. It's going to be there for you. And if you do break it or you do lose it, or it ends up in an evidence locker because you had to defend yourself at the ATM or whatever it is, you're not out. I don't even know what this is worth these days. You know, this thing's like 70 bucks, I think. This thing's a couple, two, three hundred bucks. And what's the difference if it does the same job? I don't know. We could argue semantics, but my point to the matter of fact is that this knife for the money is probably one of the quintessential best simple across the board EDC knives, in my opinion, that you can get. Spyderco Endura, Delica type of thing. You know, a lot of people like the Benchmade Griptilians. Uh, for less money, I think you get probably the same performance, if not better in some cases. And uh, definitely a stronger locking mechanism. Might not be as high speed and low drag as some other things. But you don't always need that. So either way, that's my take on it. I appreciate you guys watching. Make sure to let me know what you guys think about any of these blades in the comment section below. Uh, make sure you check the first th three links in the description box below. Those are to help you fight for your gun rights, which it's not just guns, it's freedom and liberty, and that includes knife rights, right? The Second Amendment is all-encompassing, and uh, we have to fight for it because it's the only thing that will fight for us if we choose to invoke it when necessary, and hopefully it never is. So either way, I appreciate you guys. Leave it down below. Like, share, comment, subscribe. That stuff helps out an absolute ton. And uh, if you want to help me out, check out the, uh, the link tree or the whatever the hell is posted in the comment section. And in the meantime, we'll see you guys later. But don't you ever forget.